So let's unleash the battle automata and see what they can do. Today we're looking at Adeptus Mechanicus, but with extra focus on vehicles, with a review of the Cohort Cybernetica. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Abmeg once more, and in this video I thought we'd focus on the Cohort Cybernetica. One of the new detachments of the new Adeptus Mechanicus Codex, and see what it can do for our Castellan robots and other vehicles in the armies of the Machine God. Let's talk through the detachment rule, stratagems, and enhancements, then go over a few of the more relevant vehicle data sheets for it, and finish up with a few thoughts as to effectiveness in game. In the lore, this formation basically represents one of the oldest sub branches of the Adeptus Mechanicus, dating all the way back to 30k and before. These are the branches of the cults of the Omnissiah that are responsible for deploying the battle automata onto the field, semi-independent machine minds that are controlled with rigid protocols, and perhaps as close as they can be to independent robots in 40k without committing grave tech heresy. The Mechanicus definitely don't want the Men of Iron getting loose once more. In the 30k setting, there's many different variants of automata, but in 40k currently there's just the one with these Castellan robots, Hopefully at some point Games Workshop get round to releasing a few more. It would be cool for the Abmech to have a little bit more variety. The primary rule for the detachment is that Legio Cybernetica models get access to the Doctrina Imperatives. A Legio Cybernetica models are literally just the Cybernetica Datasmith and the Castellan robots, no other units within the Codex. Though the detachment itself is quite a lot more broad reaching than just these guys, basically it's trying to make itself the detachment that gives loads of support to Ammec vehicles, with a lot of stratagems and enhancements that can help them. I must admit it is a bit weird to just have a full detachment rule that only gives your main army special rule to one unit within that army, though I guess at least in other detachments the Castellan robots aren't actually costed to have it I guess. And in the new codex, they did get a bit stronger with a few datasheet improvements, though we still have to wait to see their points values. As for what the Doctrina Imperatives offer them though, you're basically getting either the Heavy or the Assault keyword, depending on whether you're picking the Conqueror or Protector one, and you also get the secondary benefit of the AP stuff that you get, make ranged attacks at enemies in their deployment zone, and you get an extra pip of AP against them. If the enemy shoots you when you're in your deployment zone, then you worsen the AP of their attacks, and I guess that is pretty relevant with big 2 plus save threats like this. I'd say for the most part for the Castellan robots, you're probably going to want to give them the Assault keyword via the Conqueror one, that means they can stride forward and get those melee fists into combat as fast as possible, and still keep up a lot of fire with the Phosphor Blasters or Incendine Combuster. I'd say that probably the only time that you'd actually want to go into the Protector Doctrine for the Castellan robots alone would be if the enemy gets turn 1, and it is going to make the difference between them saving on a higher saving throw. If the enemy is firing a bunch of AP1 or AP2 stuff into your deployment zone, then that could be a massive deal with their 2 plus saves and worsening their AP by 1. I feel like just with the detachment rule, it is making you really want to play heavy with these guys, and you could take literally 12 of these in an army if you wanted to. So I guess that would be 1200 points worth of Castellan robots in a 2k list at time of recording, plus maybe some other vehicles for the other synergies. It is a bit of a shame for getting literally nothing for other vehicles in the army though, at least no other passive benefits. Moving on to stratagems, and the formation has 6 of them. Interestingly enough, these ones are very heavily themed, whereas most armies might have stratagems that work in different phases or in your opponent's turn, literally all of these are buffs that apply in your own command phase, and they all can only target either vehicle units or Legio Cybernetica, though I guess it's kind of redundant as Legio Cybernetica units are vehicle units for a lot of them. I guess it's trying to theme with programming your army to act in a certain way before it goes out to fight the enemy, though it does mean that you don't really get many reactive tricks or other special moves that you can pull, a lot of it's just about adding in raw power of one sort or another. For 1 CP there's Auto Divinatory Targeting, a battle tactic one, this one you nominate a robot or vehicle for and one objective marker, and then that unit can only shoot things on that objective. The unit's ballistic skill becomes a 3+, plus, and that means that it can stack with the heavy keywords to have your unit hitting on a 2+, plus if it makes sense. On top of that, the attacks also get to ignore cover. I guess for that one you want to try and use it on the biggest, scariest vehicle unit that's going to have the most impact, and I guess ideally have it against a unit that's going to get cover otherwise to actually make that bit relevant. And I guess if it does amount to hitting on a 3+, plus or a 2+, plus and then getting extra AP, you might genuinely improve the damage enough that it's worth it enough. I guess for this it's probably either going to be Castellan Robots, the Iron Striders with Las Cannons, or perhaps a Scorpius Disintegrator. Seems like an okay use of 1 CP. 
Feels like it might just always be something that's just plugged in for a little bit of extra damage though, maybe not truly game changing. For 1 CP, perhaps one of my favourite ones is Motive Imperative. This one is another command phase one, as they all are. One vehicle unit adds plus 3 to the move and plus 1 to advance and charge. Really quite a big overall boost in threat range there. It's very nice for Dragoons as they can move, advance and charge just at base with their Taser Lance loadout. And that means they could get some pretty ridiculous charges off there, but pretty nice for the Castell and Robots as well. If you do want to try and threaten the charge on something that otherwise would be a very long distance away, then the difference between them just being able to do a bit of shooting and then falling short with all of those big punchy Castell and Fists, or being able to get into combat with the thing it could be quite a big one. Feels like definitely one to consider as you're closing in. For 1 CP, there's Machine Spirit Resurgent. This one's a command phase one for a Legio Cybernetica or a vehicle unit that's below starting strength. If you're below starting strength, then you get to re-roll the hit rolls, and if you're below half strength, then you get to re-roll wound rolls as well. Again, I describe this one as a bit of a middling damage buff. I feel like you might get most out of it for, say, a unit of Castellans that's going to fire off a whole bunch of Fossa Blasters and then also make a charge after that. Or perhaps seems particularly nice if you have a Scorpius Disintegrator that gets into the spot where it's below half health but not actually quite destroyed, getting four re-rolls to hit and wound with all the Ferronite Cannon and the Disintegrator Missiles does seem rather good. I feel like it's maybe kind of similar value to the Auto Divinatory one, two different options for just turning on extra damage in different situations. Next up for 1 CP there's Machine Superiority, as always in the command phase, and you nominate one vehicle or Legio Cybernetica unit, that unit can fall back and shoot, and you get to ignore modifiers to characteristics aside from saving throws this turn. Access to fall back and shoot can be really quite disruptive for the enemy, it means they can't rely on making you have hard choices with your vehicles, and if there's something that just doesn't make sense to remain in combat with because you want the rest of your army to shoot it, or you don't want it to risk killing you in the fight phase, then this one's always an option. The ignoring modifiers thing could be good in its own right, maybe if you had an enemy unit that had say stealth and a minus one to wound going on, then that could lead to some serious extra damage boost in the right circumstance as well. For 1 CP there's Transcendent Cogitation, this one's a command phase one and it affects a Legio Cybernetica or vehicle unit, that unit can gain access to both the Conqueror and Protector Doctrina rather than just one of them, and I guess that one would usually be best used to just make sure that your units can get the other one aside from the one that you've selected at base. Say for example if you had a lone Scorpius Disintegrator sat in your deployment zone and you activated the Conqueror Doctrina for the rest of your army, that one could also give it the Protector one, so it would have the AP debuff against enemy shooting and plus one to hit via heavy. I guess alternatively, if you went second and you decided to go Protector to worsen enemy AP, then it means that you could still have one unit that gets to advance and shoot and get the extra AP in the enemy deployment zone. In general, I'd usually see it as just getting the extra Doctrina. I guess it's not really all that often that you're going to be able to get the advantage of both parts of it. The Heavy and the Assault are mutually exclusive. I suppose you might be able to get all three of the other buffs, though potentially in the right situation, though it would be a bit niche. Finally, for 1 CP, we've got Benevolence of the Omnisire. Again, it's declared in the command phase, which I think is kind of unhelpful for this one, really. It's a 6 plus feel no pain for your nominated unit, or 5 plus feel no pain against mortal wounds. I feel like this one, more than any of them, might have been more helpful if you could just declare it when the enemy actually attacks your unit, so you know they're actually going to. You can't say declare this to reactively ward off a Thousand Sons Doombolt or something. And even the mortal wound bit of it is a bit more niche than it used to be, given that devastating wounds are no longer mortal wounds. In itself, I don't think the 6 plus feel no pain is generally going to be all that worth it unless you're planning to lose a serious amount of vehicle wounds next turn. I guess maybe if you've got a big tanky 4-man unit of Castellan robots that you know is going to take the absolute entirety of the enemy firepower, then I guess it could just about have enough worth there, perhaps. Again, certainly not unusable, it is going to add a little bit more to your defence, but for 1 CP, I'd say that this one rarely is going to add up to much. Overall, for the stratagems, I feel like basically all of them are usable enough and each give you small boosts. I feel like most of them are very unlikely to actually ever deliver you an enormous win compared with your opponent. It does seem to be a detachment that's just going to give you small gains in one way or another, and it's going to be a bit more boring and predictable maybe than some other detachments out there. Loads of different ways that you could get extra damage in one way or another. I think in particular, I do like that extra movement one though, giving yourself an extra long charge range with those fighty Castellans or the Dragoons I think is well worth it if it makes the difference of you making a charge reliably. Otherwise for the enhancements they're all Tech Priest only, so I guess no giving these to things like this Guitarian Marshal or that new Sidonian Scatros. 
Currently, we don't know the points cost for these enhancements yet. Games Workshop is going to publish the points cost online in the coming week, though I think already you can have a pretty good idea as to which ones are looking good or not. The one that looks like the single best one in my opinion is Necromechanic. This one basically cancels a failed save for one of your robots or vehicles within 12 inches. The damage characteristic is modified to zero, which can be kind of enormous if you had, say, a really big damage hit come through, maybe something like a flat damage 6 from a Necron Heavy Destroyer. Or I guess the dream would be to thwart something like a Tau Railgun or a Guard Vanquisher Cannon. Even if this one is one of the most expensive enhancements in 40k, it would still be worth it. Just theoretically, even if, say, you had a Castellan robot take a failed save against a LAS cannon, that'd be saving it around about 4 or 5 wounds on average, and that roughly maths out to be 63 points worth of Castellan robot, so you've likely made your value back then and there, never mind if you managed to do that on more than one turn. Given that this army is going to be vehicle heavy, otherwise you wouldn't be bothering with it, this basically looks auto-include to have either a new firebase or advancing up the board. Otherwise, there's a motionless clarity, this one is an interesting one that allows you to auto-explode a vehicle or robot each turn within 12 inches. When the opponent destroys it, it automatically triggers its deadly demise. In general, I do quite like these auto-explode rules, but for this one, just to commit to it pre-game seems a little bit premature, and then you've got to hope that your tech priest is alive and the vehicle is in a good position when it goes down, otherwise you might just not want to. Kind of annoyingly as well, the things that usually want to get closest to the enemy are the Castellans and the Dragoons, and they only have a deadly demise of 1, so any gains from that are going to be kind of limited. I guess if that manages to splash around on a few different enemy units though, it could still be worth it if this is really cheap. Otherwise, I guess it could be nice enough for a unit that just jumped out of a Dune Rider perhaps, if you can get the transport into the enemy army, and then hopefully have it die somewhere when they can attack it, and it's going to affect multiple units, I guess that would be D3 wounds all around. And I guess the same could go for some of the Archaeopters playing a bit more aggressively. It seems fun and could be a nice to have, though I feel like unless it costs a very cheap amount, it's not really worth bothering with. Otherwise, we've got Lord of Machines. This is a kind of disappointing once per turn debuff. You have to be fighting an enemy vehicle army, then the enemy player has to have chosen to put that unit within 12 inches of your character, and then that vehicle needs to have some meaningful firepower they want to use in the shooting phase. If the vehicle is within 12 inches of the bearer and visible to it, then when it shoots it needs to take a leadership test. If it passes the test, then it still is minus 1 to hit, but if it fails the test, then it can't shoot at all. The debuff is usually just going to be mildly annoying, but occasionally it could be absolutely massive if, say, you prevented something like an Imperial Knight from shooting. This one's just really matchup dependent, though, and really positioning dependent, and assuming your opponent isn't going to try and avoid it. Again, if it's absolutely ridiculously cheap, then it could be an okay one to maybe throw on a Cybernetica Datasmith with some Castellan robots moving forward, but other than that, again, it's not one of the ones that would attract me to the detachment. Finally, we've got one called Arc Negator, or Negator. This one is a bit more of a nice simple one, and ranged weapons gain anti-vehicle 4 plus for the bearer, though it doesn't do anything for their unit. It kind of feels like this one is wanting to try and be the Omni Sterilizer, but for vehicles. Probably the two most interesting are either the Dominus's Volkite gun, which would usually do something like 2-4 to four mortal wounds due to devastating wounds on that one, or the Manipulus's Transonic Cannon, which would be a bit more reliably like 4 mortal wounds. If you've got one of those two running around in the army, then this seems absolutely reasonable to put on it, provided it's not super expensive. Again, it wouldn't really matter in every single game, but I guess their shooting is alright against infantry in the first place. Having them acting as an extra bit of anti-tank hidden in the lines could be fine as well, I guess. Overall, my take on the enhancements would be that Necromechanic is definitely worth including even if it costs loads. The rest are all situational even if they're cheap. If they're just 10 points or something to use up the last few points in an army list, then any of them seem kind of fine on a Datasmith accompanying Castellans up the board, but likely isn't going to change the world in any sort of reliable way. I feel like you can't really talk about this attachment without talking about the Castellan robots themselves, and they do seem to be really quite improved since the Index, mainly due to the buffs of the Datasmith getting a lot better. Previously in the Admetic Index though, before we had the Codex update, the unit was 200 points for two of them, or 400 for four. Chunky robots that are fairly slow with a 6 inch move, toughness 9, 7 wounds with a 2 plus save and a 5 plus invulnerable. Not really all that many wounds for the cost, but are fairly sturdy with a very high save and an invulnerable to back that up. On the defensive, they also do get that rather fun rule where they get saving throws of sixes to bounce back enemy firepower, and they take a mortal wound for each six that you roll, 
which can mean that certain small arms and things just aren't worth firing at them, as you're going to take more casualties than you deal damage to the Castellans. For weaponry, I think I'd basically always want a Castellan Fist, but besides that, I think it's kind of flexible. A standard Castellan Fist attack is four attacks hitting on a four, strength 12, AP 2, and damage 3, so quite nice for squashing elite infantry and terminators in particular there. But beyond that, you get quite a few options. In the other fist, you can either make the melee twin linked, so four V-roll wound rolls, which could be pretty big against heavy armor, though might be overkill against some, or you can trade it out for a Castellan Phosphor Blaster, that's now three attacks at strength six, AP one, and damage one. The profiles have been changed around quite a bit since the index version. And then you can pair that with either an Incendine Combustor with a bunch of torrent shots at strength six, AP one, or a heavy Phosphor Blaster on the top, compared with the regular Phosphor Blaster that gets longer range at 36 inches and damage 2 rather than damage 1. They've finally got the damage on that the correct way around pretty much. I feel like in this formation you'd probably want some of these accompanied by the Data Smith maybe to bear some of those enhancements and get to advance them up the board while firing off their guns, getting them closer to melee and maybe threatening surprisingly long charges on the enemy with a stratagem that gives you plus 3 inch to your move and plus 1 to your charge. In theory, you average a 17 inch charge threat range with that. You could even think about tank shock when you get in as well. The Datasmith definitely got a very big upgrade coming into the Codex though. He was 35 points before. A fairly basic sort of tech priest profile with an architect pistol and a power fist. Not really going to be doing too much in his own right, but helps out the Castellan robots quite a lot. The big changes for him were that he can now start in the Aegis Protocol, so that means that the Castellan robots get Toughness 10. Quite a nice boost that against certain attack types, they wouldn't have got that before. And then when you're changing protocols now, you no longer have to roll against leadership and have a big chance of failing. Now he just does it automatically. He seems to have learned how to load those floppy disks in now. Besides the extra toughness, which I guess you want to trade out of when you're going on the aggressive, you either get to choose with an extra two attacks in combat, which does make them fairly fearsome at six attacks each, or an extra two attacks at range, again that would be quite a lot of volume fire I guess, each Phosphor Blaster would be getting five shots, and the Incending Combustor would be D6 plus two, which is rather fun. I feel like with the upgrades to that, that's probably tipped the balance into normally wanting to include him rather than not right now. Otherwise though, basically any other of the vehicles are going to be really relevant in this detachment, just as focuses for all those stratagems. The Scorpius is the biggest, most threatening and most expensive, so that one maybe feels like one of the most relevant. They were seen at least occasionally before in strong lists with ferromite cannons and disruptor missiles, being able to put out some fairly good generalist shooting with damage D6, plus a few heavy stubbers to back it up. It's quite an efficient user of stratagems as you get the chance to farm command points when you use stratagems on it as well due to the data tether it has. Might just make it a bit more tempting for plugging in those damage boosts to it. The 4 reroll hits one does seem quite nice, and could be quite nice for the ballistic skill 3 plus and ignores cover benefits that you have. At least in theory that should only cost 2 thirds of a CP, so it might be just enough to make it efficient. Otherwise its core boost is for the Belarus Energy Cannon getting your plus 1 to hit against infantry units, and the Ferromite a plus 1 to hit against monsters and vehicles. Again, I suppose we'll have to wait and see the points cost before we know how efficient it is compared with the rest of the codex, but again, it feels like one to watch for this detachment. Otherwise here, I guess just about every other vehicle unit is worth mentioning. The Dragoons with Taser Lances could be potentially charging really quite a long way as they get to natively advance and charge, plus 5 inches to their threat range overall seems well worth 1 CP. The Orange Dune Crawler maybe could be a particularly painful one to past that save with the necro mechanic one given that that has the 4 plus invulnerable save just feels like your opponent has to work a bit to try and get that to fail saves in the first place iron striders are another at least fairly points intensive vehicle type units if you're not just fielding cheap ones for disruption and distraction type things you could have 150 points worth of vehicle to buff with the stratagems some fairly focused anti-tank firepower with those twin cognis last cannons there Tech Priest Engine Seers might be interesting to support vehicles, and Lone Operatives could be good choices to bear those characters. I feel like Core could get on pretty well with the Castellan robots as well. Use Shroud Psalm to give them cover. That works very nicely with 2 plus saves slogging up the board. Basically, if it's a vehicle or friends with a vehicle, then it's going to be relevant here. The Archaeopters and the Dune Rider definitely get more support than others. The Dune Rider could be fun for that auto explode option. Overall, for the detachment itself though, I feel like it maybe isn't going to be one of the ones that's instantly loved by people. I feel like it's just very dependent on its units being strong enough just to overwhelm the enemy with their raw power of their datasheets. 
and it's a detachment that just adds to their raw power as opposed to really gives you any sort of enormous swings by doing gamey things in one way or another. The detachment rule is good for Castellans, but pretty mediocre when it's considering that it's not going to be affecting around about half your army. You probably do want to go at least fairly heavy on the Castellans for this formation. The stratagems, I feel like they all get into the area of being kind of okay, but are rarely ever going to punch above that. Lots of ways just to get a bit more damage to make the army just harder hitting than it otherwise would be. If you're in a direct gunfight, I guess that will help you to win it, but whether or not that's enough, that's another question. In general, they're an okay support package for a vehicle army though. I feel like there's going to be so many situations where one of them is going to be really quite good. You just have to choose which one's going to have the most impact in your command phase. Otherwise, for the enhancements, I'd say that Necromechanic is good. Seems auto include. The rest otherwise are kind of fine, not going to change the world. Overall, despite what seems like a fairly muted initial reaction to this one, I feel like it is at least kind of interesting trying to make Admech work as a raw power vehicle type army just to overwhelm the enemy with a whole load of firepower and chunky robots marching up to you. It's not usually been the way that they've typically wanted to play. Typically for raw power data sheets, you, people have usually been going for the Cataphron Breachers with their arc rifles and things. So I think most people would have this as not really looking like one of the strongest attachments of the Codex. I guess we'll wait and see to see if anyone has some good success with it though, particularly as we don't know the points cost yet. If Castellan robots somehow managed to become the strongest unit in the Codex because they were ridiculously cheap, then I've got no doubt that people would take a second look at this. And the cheaper every other vehicle data sheet is, like the Iron Strider, Scorpius or Dragoons, then the better. Let me know what you make of this one though down in the comments below. Would you be tempted to put some big punchy robots on the board, run them up and start smacking people? And if so, then do you feel that this one is the best way to do it compared with the other detachments in the Codex? Look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comments below, and I'll hopefully be trying to get the Admet Codex review done sometime in the next day or so. I might try and release a top 5 changes for the book after the Necron Codex comes out as the first port of call. Feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics or check back later if you'd like to see that. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.